Hello, CyberDoc here. Today I want to show you a repair for iPad 2 backlight. As you can see, uh, during the testing, this larger board has a thin Apple screen. So now to test this uh, larger board once more. See that Apple sign? The little Apple logo, um, It's there's no backlight on this screen. So to start, you take first take the um, the magnetic the anti-static shield off, and you want to cut the frame with a precision cutter. And once you make a first incision cut on the metal frame on the side, you want to pry it outward gently. Not too hard because you might rip off the pads when you do this. So do it gently and then after that you can like again gently use your fingers just lightly peel off the outer metal frame. So what I'm gonna use today it's CyberDuck alloy. This is a low melting temperature alloy. And our um, no clink blocks. So, what I do in this repair is uh, well, I'm gonna do this under the microscope, and there will be another video uploaded with the um, just a micro microscope view. So, what I do. In this particular repair, as I put the paste on the region, the no clean solder paste, flux, flux paste. Okay, let's start it again. Um, so what I'm doing here now is I just put the no clean solder paste flux on the region on the solder, and I also place a piece of quick alloy, or cyberdog alloy to next to the component I want to remove and now I'm heating the iron to I guess around 300 degrees Celsius and now I am touching the iron using the iron to touch the um, the backlight filter and with the quick alloy um, and the flux I remove the backlight filter that way. Again, it would be much easier if you just watch uh, my other videos doing this similar repair under the microscope. So now I am. Um, taking out the backlight filter from its pack paper packaging. 
Uh, you want to be careful when you get your backlight filter for iPad to repair. It's very small, so when you open it, it might fly off and then you can find it. Uh, but if you only bought one, it, that could be troublesome. So be careful when you take it off on the packaging because remember it's really, really small. And you can do this by naked eyes, but I prefer to do it under the microscope. It's really small, so you need very good eyesight or a microscope. Or maybe one of those uh, dent dentist or surgeon's loop that goes up to uh, 3.5 magnification. So now I'm um, placing the backlight filter onto the original solder pad that was left on the board after I removed the previous broken backlight filter. And after that, you play, after you place the new backlight filter on to its proximate location, remember I used the um, CyberDoc alloy before, so the melting temperature on the pad right now is close to 6 degree, 60 degree or 70 degree. So right now, I'm using my heat gun and the temperature I'm setting my heat gun at, it could be 150 or 200. I personally prefer 200-ish. So I'm, right now, I'm using 200 degrees Celsius for the heat gun. Remember, the left free solder on the iPad 2, originally, it melts around 200 I think 250, 260 degrees Celsius. If you want to be really like certain, uh, 300 degree will melt the lead free solder that's on the original solder on iPad 2. But the uh, CyberDoc alloy I used previously to remove the backlight chip, it's a low melting temperature, has a low melting temperature close to 57, 58 degrees Celsius. Um, that alloy is very brittle. The one downside using it to, instead of using it for desoldering and use it for soldering is that it can break off because it's very brittle, it's not stable. But since the backlight chip is not a movable part, it will be okay to use it for uh, quick soldering back and as long as you don't touch it, it's not gonna break it. Okay, so um, going back to the video here, I now I'm doing the testing phase. So what happened is the backlight lit up, but the screen is black. And you see that the backlight lit up and it is backlight. Now I'm very confused. Um, I hope there's nothing else wrong with this larger board. Since physically, I don't think there's anything wrong with it other than maybe the backlight filter was broken and that needed to repair. And since if it's not a backlight track, uh, if the backlight track had problem. Okay, so I'm trace back. The weirdest part is that this, for me at the moment, is the, um, previously when I was doing the testing, there was image and there is an Apple logo showing up without the backlight. That tells me that the backlight is no good. There's something wrong with the backlight track. So what I did was I replaced the most probable part that goes out. It's the uh, backlight filter. And then after I replace the filter, I get backlight. So that tells me nothing wrong with the backlight track because all it does is let out the backlight, but there's no image. And that can only mean one thing. Either I did something, I screwed it up and break the board somehow from the image track and the LCD image track, which is unlikely because you saw the entire video. I didn't do anything of the sort. I was not anywhere near the uh, image image track. It's, it's even still in the metal shields. So the ne next likely problem is either the LCD screen is no good or in my case, it's actually the LCD LED cable, the ribbon cable that's a, that connects the data from LCD to the logic board. 
it's no good because I use it so often to test um, iPad 2 backlights for repairs. And every time I do that, I bend the uh, cable a little bit. So eventually those cable goes bad. And so yeah, I replace the cable, voila, you get backlight. And what you want to do is you want to make sure this backlight is stable. So you want to keep it, keep the uh, little Apple logo going until the home screen lights up and then do turn on and turn off, turn on and turn off to see like, um, you fix the short problem from the backlight track. So that's what I usually do. I wait until the home screen lights up. Okay, so the home screen lights up, the backlight is fixed. Thank you for watching. Again, um, for the tools using this repair, you can buy it from my website from below, uh, cyberdocllc.com. You can get the low melting solder alloy I was using in this repair, and also the no clean that you see was used, the no clean solder flux that was used in this video.